On September 13, 2007, we traveled to the Devil's Punch Bowl near Pear Blossom, California. I spoke to Park Superintendent David Numer about the Punch Bowl formation and the San Andreas Fault and other faults. This is that conversation. Tell us about the Devil's Punch Bowl. Yeah, let's go out and look at it. Okay. Uh, established it off of it. So the County of Los Angeles took it upon themselves to open up the Devil's Punch Bowl. Yes. And this so is so it's a Los Angeles County Park. Okay, it's not a state park. And this is this is like a, a, a where two faults come together. No, actually, actually, what it is is it's a syncline. A syncline is a U-shaped or V-shaped area of rock strata, and these are sandstone slabs that were laid down horizontally, and on each side of us is a fault. On the side of the mountain above us here, you can see coming through Vincent Gap. Okay. Over there, the gap in the mountains. Yep. That's the Punch Bowl Fault, and if you follow right along where the, the mountain gets real steep up there, you can see some bare greenish gray rocks up on the side of the mountain there, and that's the uh, Punch Bowl Fault. The high mountain side of the Punch Bowl Fault thrusts up if there's an earthquake, so the high mountains are being thrusted up along that fault. Okay. And also notice that all the rocks to our right here are all tilted up with that fault. So as the mountains are lifted up, the rocks that were laid down flat have been tilted up to almost vertical due to uh, fault uplift and warping. And that's the sandstone, you say? Or These what? are sandstone slabs, yes. Then straight across the canyon, follow the angle across, you can see the uh, sandstone stops that direction and changes direction and all of the rocks off to our left are all tilted up with the pinion fault that is that reddish rusty colored band of uh, soil and, and rock across the side of that mountain over there where the white sandstone stops it changes to a rust color and that's the pinion fault and all of pinion ridge across there is being thrusted up with that fault. Okay, so the, the, was it, it wasn't created necessarily from, it's created from the faults, right? Right. The two faults. Well, the faults, the faults are tilting the rocks, so the rocks were laid down flat, and as the mountains lift up on each side, the slabs have been tilted up into a steep V-shape. So the angle of the rocks is due to the uplift of the mountains, and the canyon is here because of erosion. So you have mountain building, the mountains are being pushed up, and then water fl flowing off of the mountains cuts a deep gully or canyon down the side of the uh, mountain to uh, form Punchbowl Canyon. So the canyon is here and the hole that you see is here because of water cutting its way down the side of the mountain, exposing the angle of the sandstone. Wow. But the angle of the sandstone is due to the uplift of the mountain range and the faulting. <laughs> Just over the reddish hill there is the San Andreas Fault. And the San Andreas Fault, of course, uh, is the longest fault in California, extending from the Me Mexican border up north of San Francisco and out into the Pacific. So it goes through Wrightwood, which is that way, right? Right, huh? the San Andreas goes through Wrightwood. And then it goes this way across, across the Mojave? Across Palmdale. Okay. And through Leona Valley and Lake Hughes, and then over Mount Pinos and Fraser Park area, across the Carrizo Plain up toward Monterey, up across the San Francisco Peninsula to Bodego Bay and out into the uh, Pacific Ocean. Interesting. I always thought it went up through the mountains this way, but it didn't. No, it doesn't. It runs right along the edge of the mountains. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. it cuts right between uh -huh. us and San Jose. Yeah, yeah. That's weird. So it starts out down about? Yeah, down in the Imperial Valley, right down in here. Okay. Comes up through, uh, actually right along the edge here toward uh, Salton Indio, sea. Uh -huh, above the Salton Sea, right through the Indio Hills, right up through the gap right here and along the side of the uh, San Bernardino Mountains. And that's the Mormon Rocks right where your fingers and are then, almost yeah, right, right there? Yeah, right up to here. Uh -huh. That's uh, through the Cajon Pass up Lone Pine Canyon into Wrightwood. From Wrightwood it drops down to through Big Pines to uh, Valley Irmo right below us, across to Palmdale, through Leona Valley and Lake Hughes, and continues over to Mount Pinos and Fraser Park. It curves and goes right up through the Carrizo Plain. You can see the, the mountains all along sure. here where the fault is. Continues on up, goes right inland here, right through here, right along the, uh, the uh, San Francisco Peninsula, north of the peninsula, and then goes right on out and into the Pacific out here. That's hmm. the San Andreas. 
The Garlock Fault, which is the second longest fault in California, goes from the Gorman area along the edge of the Tatchby Mountains across um, and to, toward Death Valley here, and then ends over in this area somewhere. So that's quite a large fault also. I think it's the second longest fault. Hmm. I can see that. I can see the, when, especially yeah. on the camera, you can see the, the, the shading difference. Yes. In fact, almost anywhere in California here where you see straight lines, there's a there's fault. faulting. Uh -huh, because that, those mountains are being thrusted up along the faults. Same way when you get over into uh, Nevada. There's so faults in Nevada too. Look at huh? All of the faults in Nevada, yes. Yeah, it seems like all the mountain ranges go north and south in Nevada. Yeah. yeah. And the difference in, in Southern California is the transverse ranges, they're called, that run the wrong direction. Okay. Everything else runs somewhat north. Oh, south. that's interesting. And in Southern California, we have the transverse ranges. And that's because as the pressure of this part of the crust of the Earth Sea is moving northward, that's why the San Andreas is a contact between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate. And as it moves northward, it buckles and slides around the base of this huge mountain range. The Sierra Nevada is like an iceberg that sticks up. And the iceberg tip is Mount Whitney at 14,496 feet. Most of the mountain range extends deep into the crust of the earth. And as uh, the uh, coastal plate moves northward, it pushes, buckles, and slides around the base of this mountain range because it can't go straight forward into it. So, it, so that's what pushes these transverse ranges upward is that northward movement of the Pacific uh, plate. And as it buckles up, it moves and slides around like this. So the San Andreas moves horizontally like this to get around there. Mm. And these other faults that make up these mountains here are actually thrusting faults, which are reverse, I mean, uh, yeah, reverse faults. So, so are you more of a geologist, David, or more of a, a naturalist? Yeah, What's a little that? bit of everything, yeah. So, so I, I love geology, though. It's a, it's a fascinating... So, so the San Andreas isn't going under or over, it's pushing right. along the sides. Yeah, it's not a subduction zone. It's not going down and under. It's actually colliding, and then buckling move. upward, and sliding around. So the, the San Andreas itself moves horizontally. But these other faults that are related to it are okay. pushed up because of pressures along the San Andreas. So that's why I said there is a relationship between these other faults and the San Andreas. Even though the San Andreas moves horizontally, these other faults are taking up the pressure upward and being pushed up and compressed. Okay. Well, on Sundays at 1 o'clock, we go down to the San Andreas Fault. First, we talk about the San Andreas and earthquake faults uh, local to the Punch Bowl here. And then we talk about general geology of California. And then we actually go down to the San Andreas Fault uh, several miles down the road and we look at a trench that was dug back in the 70s across the San Andreas Fault. And that trench shows layers of sands and gravels and organic material that have been offset by movement on the San Andreas Fault. So they dug down a, a, a trench down 1,100 years worth of sediments. And in 1,100 years, there were eight major events that offset the layers of sands and gravels. And so that's real fascinating to go down and actually stand on the San Andreas Fault and see how it has displaced uh, the layering. When was the last major event? 1857 was the last. So are we pretty much do? Or? We are definitely do, yeah. In 1100 years, there were eight major events, approximately 80 to 180 years apart. And 1857 was the last time we had a And this tour is on su every Sunday, every year Sunday round? Every Sunday at one o'clock, yes. This has been a Best Syndication video production.